The catastrophic trigger that led to the Earth's largest mass extinction is revealed in fossils. Geology shows us what's happened in the past, paleontology. Scientists now think they've finally come closer to find, identifying the cause of Earth's worst mass extinction. They tracked down the geochemical trigger that may have started all of this. It's known as the Great Dying. Kindly support my Patreon account because YouTube has again demonetized my channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now, scientists believe that this great dying took place about 250 million years ago. Unfortunately, the surface of the sea recycles itself just about every 200 million years. So they have not been able to find too much evidence because of the recycling of the Earth's surface. Now, these, this is a map of known comet and asteroid impact sites around the world. You can see that most of them are in the northern hemisphere. These are confirmed impact sites. Now, the Great Dying, believed to have taken place about 250 million years ago, a lot of species have been uh, have become extinct because of the fact that they couldn't breathe. They had no air to breathe and they were not used to breathing carbon dioxide and gases that came in with whatever uh, impacted Earth and caused uh, eruptions, volcanic eruptions. The Permian-Triassic extinction, known as the PTR extinction or P extinction, uh, colloquially as the Great Dying. There's evidence for one to three distinct pulses of extinction caused by, for those pulses include one more large or more large meteor impact events, massive volcanic eruptions such as the Serbian, Siberian traps in Russia, northern Russia, and climate change brought on by large releases of underwater methane or methane producing microbes. Now, scientists think that they finally come closer to identifying the cause of this worst mass extinction in the Earth's history, known as the Great Dying, happening about 252 million years ago. The new research based on a study of fossil shells left behind by clam-like brachiopods in what today is the Southern Alps. The shells record seawater pH levels, which are affected by atmospheric CO2 concentrations. And it looks as though roughly 252 million years ago, there was a sudden intense injection of carbon dioxide into Earth's atmosphere. It was most likely from a gigantic series of volcanic eruptions in Siberia. That's what the researchers say. The increased warming and ocean acidification would have killed off certain species very quickly, while increasing nutrient-rich waters would have uh, deleted oxygen levels in the ocean over a longer time period, causing further extinctions of the marine animals. This domino-like collapse of the interconnected life-sustaining cycles and processes ultimately led to the observed catastrophic extension of mass extinction at the Permian-Triassic boundary. This is what marine biochemist, biochemist Hanna Jurikova explained, who is now at the University of St. Andrews in the UK. The team measured different isotopes of boron and carbon in the shells to get a reading on the seawater acidity used using high precision instruments like the large geometry secondary ion mass spectrometer, or SIMS for short. Combined with detailed computer models, the data could be used to reenact this great dying event. Scientists have long accepted that a series of volcanic eruptions in what is now Siberia were a key cause to the great dying. But this is the first time a reconstruction of the atmospheric circumstances has been made in such detail. This provides us with more information on the underlying mechanisms of what happened on Earth at that time and what the consequences were over the next several thousand years. The study answers some questions about combinations of events and their sequence. They were linking CO2 rise with volcanic activity. The analysis and modeling also suggests that another factor, the release of large amounts of methane, 
by microbes on the seafloor was not so important. They said, with this technique, we can not only reconstruct the evolution of atmospheric CO2 concentrations, but also clearly trace it back to volcanic activity. This was uh, what marine bio biochemist Marcus Gilgar from Geomar Helmut Center for Ocean Research Kiel in Germany explains. He said the dissolution of methane hydrates, which has been suggested as a potential further cause, is highly unlikely based on our data. Scientists continue to piece together the story of what happened in this great dying event, the Permian-Triassic extinction, based on geological records that are hundreds of millions of years old, not the easiest bit of detective work. There's still plenty more to be discovered about what the contributive factors were and how long they lasted and how some species hung on. Around 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species were killed off for good. And you can imagine how many species were around if we're talking about almost 100% of marine and 70% of land species. Now, what makes this new study exciting is that it shows how our understanding can be deepened through improved analysis techniques that are coming online, using, including the use of spectrometry and the study of uh, shellfish, the brachiopod fossils. Now, without these new techniques, it would be difficult to reconstruct environmental processes more than 250 million years ago in the same level of detail as we have now. This is what marine geochemist Anton Eisenhower from Geomar said. In addition, the new methods can be applied for other scientific applications. This was published in Nature Geoscience and it's by David Need on Science Alert. Now, we know that a lot of these um, species became extinct because of the fact that they didn't have oxygen, they didn't have air, and uh, they could not breathe uh, carbon dioxide. The terrestrial plants, the gold gap, coal gap, no coal deposits are known from the early Triassic, and those in the middle Triassic are thin and low grade. The, the coal gap has been explained in many ways. It's been suggested that new, more aggressive fungi, insects, and vertebrae evolved and killed last number tree, vast number of trees. These decomposers themselves suffered heavy losses of species during that extinction and are not considered a likely cause of the coal gap. It could simply be that coal forming plants were rendered extinct. I mean, even the plants suffered, you see. And that it took 10 million years before a new site, a suit of plants to adopt to the moist, uh, the moist acid conditions of peat bogs. Abiotic factors, that factors not caused by organisms, abiotic meaning uh, in biology and ecology, abiotic components or abiotic factors are non-living chemical and physical parts of the environment that affect living organisms. So abiotic factors such as decreased rainfall or increased input of clastic sediments may also be to blame. The clastic rocks are composed of fragments or casts of pre-existing minerals and rocks. A clast is a fragment of geological detritus, chunks of smaller grains of rock broken off uh, by physical weathering. So uh, you can see not even the plants were there. There weren't even enough plants to call to do decompose and cause coal, coal deposits. So this was a really bad event. Anyway, please leave your comments and thank you for your support.